Well, we are introducing the next speaker. I just handed over the presentation. <laughs> And it's, um, we will hear about Italy, and uh, Mauricio, who is already next to me in, on the stage. Uh, Mauricio Rizzetto, welcome. And uh, we are looking forward to hear your story. And just for the audience, uh, Mauricio has been involved in uh, yeah, EL for over 20 years. Uh, currently, he is a CTO of a, a bigger hospital provider in the Venice region. But he is also a member of the board of the, uh, the Italian Association for uh, Clinical Engineers in Healthcare and uh, IG uh, Italy co-chair from the user side. So I think your slides are here in the meantime. Yes, please. Uh, Thank floor you is yours. for introducing myself. So first of all, um, uh, I would like to apologize for the using of my slide uh, of the Italian language is not traduced. That's because also I'm using some official slides coming from Central Part, so from two uh, national projects that I'm going to tell you what is going on in Italy. Um, so the, the story starts because the next generation found gave Italy the possibility to have a very important uh, part of financement to, um, to use a, a, in the digital health. And as you can see, there are uh, more or less uh, seven, eight different uh, um, um, fields where the government decided to invest the next generation funds. And uh, if you look at the yellow, the yellow is the 15 uh, uh, billion uh, uh, euros are in the healthcare. At the right part, there are especially two uh, split in two very important parts. One is more for hospitals, for digital health, and one is more for uh, telemedicine and, let's say, out-hospital uh, uh, um, healthcare. So these are the two parts that are decided, uh, where the government decided to invest uh, the next generation money in healthcare. Um, as you can see, uh, one billion goes to telemedicine, and uh, um, it is, of course, a centralized project. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you later on that there is a central part, but the regions, uh, they can do a part of the, the work uh, um, independently, uh, following some guidelines that are centralized. The second info uh, very important project uh, is for the electronic health information exchange. And um, uh, that's the second part. We have already an electronic health information exchange system in Italy since 2012. And uh, now uh, they launched the new project, uh, the 2.0 uh, IHEE, um, the new project. Um, so this is uh, the electronic health information exchange, as I told you. Is, uh, it starts by law in 2012, and uh, um, every region in Italy started uh, independently projects following the law. A law was written uh, with uh, the, the guides, uh, guidelines on how to develop such kind of project. Um, this project, uh, mm, uh, during these 10 years, let's say, um, had a different evolution in every region, completely different. Regions that are very, very far from having good results and regions that had uh, better results, let's say. Uh, for example, the region where I come in uh, had, uh, mm, let's say, quite uh, interesting results. With COVID, uh, my region decided to use uh, uh, this, uh, this um, the electronic health information exchange, also to give information about the COVID situation, vaccination certifications, 
uh, tests, uh, COVID test results and so on. And this helped a lot uh, to, uh, to make uh, that the, the patient, they use the system. I forgot to say that uh, at the beginning, the system was developed uh, uh, looking at the patient. It was something that was projected for the patient, that he could have all his information uh, um, concerning his healthcare situation uh, in, in the electronic uh, health information exchange. And of course, it was in PDF, the documents were in PDF, but um, uh, during COVID, the people find very, very, very good uh, uh, to use the system to have the possibility. We had also, in only my region, uh, we started also uh, to distribute uh, images, uh, PACS images to the patients, uh, as, um, patient CDs and so on. So this helped uh, a lot to have more and more people using it. And as you can see, the basic, the, so the new system, which is called 2.0, um, has a, a minimum set data that, that have to be there, uh, documents. Uh, um, so um, the approach uh, is from documents to data approach, and there must be at least uh, admission data and then clinical medical reports, of course, emergency room reports, patient summary, of course, this, that was, discharge letters and a prescription, e prescription, medication, and of course inside also vaccination certification and data consent. So this must be, uh, uh, every region has to have it, and then every region can decide to put even more things uh, uh, inside uh, the system. Um, what is nice is, is nice. What is interesting, I may, may be, is that um, at the end of the project, uh, uh, the object, the, the object is uh, the result has to be that 90% uh, of the CDA documents. Um, has to be inside the system. So 26 is the end of the project, 2026. And um, so there is uh, now a lot to do uh, to have uh, CDA documents first and then uh, to make it sure that 90% of the documents are there in CDA. And uh, another important thing is that general practitioner working in public systems, which is the majority, also working uh, for the public system, 85% uh, of them should use uh, the system and put their old information. And this is uh, also something uh, where uh, it's, uh, it is today, uh, maybe we like maybe in, in all the countries in Europe, very difficult to involve general practitioners and to collaborate um, to put the, their information uh, on the system, on the, on the databases. Uh, the digital transformation, the, the, the architecture of the system, which is, uh, as I said, centralized, decided and put it uh, in, in the rules written, centralized, um, is, is using a very um, peculiar uh, architecture, a bit peculiar architecture, let's say. Um, uh, so they decided to put uh, uh, in the CDA document inside the PDF report. So that's uh, something a bit strange. Uh, Mm, I don't know exactly why, but uh, uh, what I can imagine is that we have a lot of documents inside the systems in PDF uh, and they want to make it easy to uh, guarantee the visualization of the document. We have to think that this project started as a project for the patient and not for professionists. Uh, but that, that's, that is what in, in place. So every um, hospital, every uh, healthcare 
local healthcare has to have a, a local gateway. And this gateway has to transform the CDA documents uh, to fire entities. So there is uh, some re in the center, some regional repositories. Uh, um, everything that is blue is still uh, here now. What is orange has to be built uh, till 26 at the end uh, of uh, the project. And uh, so, as you, as you see, this, the, the central system is going to collect uh, all this, um, this, uh, this uh, fire uh, CDA documents. Um, an, another big project uh, that uh, maybe has to do something with what happens in uh, every country uh, with COVID is the telemedicine project uh, that is also centralized uh, and the decision were made there. So there are some services of telemedicine that are centralized and some services that can be developed uh, in a region autonom ind independently but following guidelines that uh, are centralized. So what can be done or can be used if it is still there because developed during COVID uh, is uh, the module of uh, telecounseling, televisit, as you can see, telemonitoring and telecare. These are services that can be developed or used inside the region, but they, these services have to fulfill rules and to have interoperability with centralized uh, um, control uh, and for the system. And um, one billion, as I said you before, is the budget uh, and 250 millions uh, go to the uh, central platform and 7050 to the regions uh, uh, to, to develop uh, the platform of telemedicine, giving the, the four services that I was telling you before. Um, I'm going further. This slide is not working, sorry. So the centralized services are the business, uh, the business glossary, um, um, uh, that, that, is, uh, that makes the, the, dictionary, the dictionary of uh, the, the services, uh, um, sorry. Uh, the server on which uh, we realize the semantic interoperability and maps all the different local telemedicine services. That is the business uh, glossary that is realized in a centralized way. The workflow engine is the following the clinical paths of all the information. And uh, the KPI dashboard allows the governance of telemedicine in a centralized way. Then there is the fourth part, which uh, uh, involves the, the collaboration of IHE Catalyst, as you can see. And there is the part of testing program for supporting the conformance process of different products involved. And so this is, uh, um, uh, I, I participate in some working groups uh, on the validation of the solution. And the aim of that is uh, having a, a control centralized on what is going on on all the regional uh, systems and having the possibility to uh, doing also, and this is, was done, a sort of labeling of the solution of the market and a continuous uh, monitoring of what is going on on the solutions. Okay, this is the ecosystem that at the end should come out uh, uh, with the services of telemedicine, the platform, uh, and uh, uh, at the end, uh, the, uh, the health record. Okay, that's uh, everything I have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mauricio. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes. 
Uh, with the move of fire, of course, you need some profiles for, for that. Are they then uh, Italy-specific profiles developed uh, so solely in, in Italy, or are they aligned with some, some other profiles, fire profiles, that you would use? Uh, maybe uh, I, I'm not uh, in the condition to give you uh, the, the right answer on that, sorry. I have a look at some of... No, Cloud is not there. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Cloud. <laughs> Any other question, maybe? Do you have the info of what is the actual adoption rate of the of the systems that are in place right now? So I know that the amount of patients that are covered by the system or amount of documents that are being exchanged or, or medical records. Yes, yes I, as I said you, um, there is a very different situation uh, in the different regions. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on the service you give, uh, the adoption is higher. Uh, because the patient, they, they, they use, uh, they, 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 uh, they use it, the system because it's useful. So you have to give them the possibility uh, to, to the, 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 the motivation of uh, doing something to uh, find the right way to use it. The system has to be usable and uh, you have to convince them that uh, it's useful to do it. So it depends a lot on that. Um, the second part is that also professionists ask to use the system. Even if it was projected, the project was uh, for a patient. Uh, but then afterwards, and now with this 2.0 project, the idea is to use all this data also for government, also, also for statistics, for research. So. The change now is big, but it's on the floor at the moment. So uh, we, are, we have not all the system in place now, so we are not uh, using it in that way. So the moment is just a lot of documents uh, that you can uh, consult. And sometimes it helps you to overcome the problem that there are no electronic patient record inside a hospital. If a patient is coming to you and he tells you that he had uh, uh, something in a different hospital and you can through this, uh, this system have a look on what happened uh, to him and to look his personal records even if it is outside the hospital he is visiting in that moment but it's just something that uh, helps when there is no other possibility okay thank you